I'm working through the rates of reaction section in the first version of the NSC 2020 chemistry paper and rates of reaction is tested in question 1.4 and 1.5 of multiple choice where 1.4 reads zinc granules react as follows with excess hydrochloric acid solution and the reaction given here which one of the following combinations of volume and concentration of HCl will result in the highest initial reaction rate for the same mass of zinc granules used. Assume that the zinc granules are completely covered by the acid in all cases. Now, our most important factor that is going to influence the initial rate of reaction is going to be the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution. So that would immediately suggest to us that option B is the correct option because it has the highest concentration. You can take a longer approach to get to the same answer where you can first calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid present in each of these solutions, number of moles for each of these, and you would find that the options B and D both have the same number of moles of hydrochloric acid present, where once again we use collision theory to say that it must be option B because option B has the highest concentration of our reactant and therefore would have the fastest initial rate of reaction. Question 1.5, the role of a catalyst in a chemical reaction is to increase the, and the option here, the correct option is increase the rate of reaction. We know that a catalyst increases the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. It does not change the heat of reaction. It lowers the activation energy. It has no effect on the yield and therefore can only increase the rate of reaction. So the answer to 1.5 is option D. Rates of reaction is always tested in question 5 in the NSC papers, and question 5 reads as follows. The reaction of calcium carbonate and excess dilute hydrochloric acid is used to investigate one of the factors that affects reaction rate. The balanced equation for this reaction is given here. The same mass of calcium carbonate is used in all experiments and the temperature of the hydrochloric acid in all experiments is 40 degrees Celsius. Important to note here immediately they are saying the same mass so we know that we are starting with the same amount of reactants in each different experiment and then since we have the same temperature that would then tell us that we are not comparing how temperature affects the rate of reaction. The reaction conditions for each uh, experiment are summarized in the table below and they are given here. We can see each experiment has exactly the same volume of hydrochloric acid. Each experiment has exactly the same concentration of hydrochloric acid. The only thing that changes is the state of division where we know that granules are essentially large pieces. Lumps are possibly also bigger pieces than that and powder we know is a very fine form of the solid calcium carbonate. 5.1, for this investigation, write down the dependent and 5.1.2, the independent variable. I always prefer to start with the independent variable. The independent variable is what we are changing. The person who is performing this experiment, what we are changing or what we are testing here and what we can see is that the difference between each of these experiments is the state of division. Now it's important to take this one step further where state of division might be accepted depending on the marking guidelines. The correct answer that would always be accepted is to say that this is the surface area of the calcium carbonate. We need to remember this because when we are talking about collision theory, collision theory refers specifically to surface area. It does refer to state of division but only in passing through to get to the surface area of calcium carbonate. Basically we have changed, we doing the experiment between experiments A, B and C have changed the state of division and therefore that is our independent variable. Then we go back to question 5.1.1. What is the dependent variable? Now what has changed as a result of this change that I have made? And as we'd expect, when I change the surface area, 
I am going to change the rate of this reaction. It is often tempting to write down that it is the time that changes, and although that is true, it is not the most correct answer. The time is what we are measuring, but we are only measuring the time so that we can determine the rate of reaction, which is what we are actually trying to measure. Question 5.2. The carbon dioxide gas, CO2, produced during experiment A, so this is the graph for experiment A, is collected in a gas syringe. The volume of gas collected is measured every 20 seconds, and the results obtained are shown in the graph below. As we can see, the volume increases quickly at first as there are plenty of reactants present and high concentrations of those reactants. And then as the reaction progresses, the rate at which gas is produced decreases until we eventually reach this time at 60 seconds where the reaction reaches completion. We know that because there are no more products being formed. The concentration or the volume of carbon dioxide remains constant from 60 to 120 seconds. Question 5.2. What can be deduced from the graph regarding the rate of the reaction during the time interval 20 to 40 seconds? And that is question 5.2.1. And what we can see is they are asking what can be deduced from the rate between 20 and 40 seconds. And what we want to see here, what we want to show, we know that the gradient of this graph represents the rate of the reaction is that we need to show that we understand that the rate starts to decrease. We can see that the rate at 20 seconds is far higher than the rate at 40 seconds. And they've asked us here to fully explain. They have not asked us to explain our answer. So all that we needed to do is provide a brief explanation to say that the rate starts to decrease because the concentration of our reactants, the reactant here being our acid of HCl, decreases. The rate starts to decrease because the concentration of hydrochloric acid decreases. The next question, question 5.2.2. What can be deduced from the graph regarding the rate of reaction during the time interval 60 seconds to 120 seconds? And as we can see, at those time intervals or between those time intervals, the rate of reaction is zero. The reaction has reached completion. The reaction has reached completion because the calcium carbonate, our reactant that was the limiting reactant, is used up. So we say that the rate between those two points is zero because our reactant that was the limiting reactant is used up and therefore the reaction has reached completion. Question 5.3. Calculate the average rate in cubic centimeters per second at which carbon dioxide is produced in the experiment. And so you are always encouraged to give some kind of a formula here where we would say that our rate in this case is equal to the change in volume over the change in time. They have asked for the rate in this entire experiment, which means that the rate from when the experiment starts until when the experiment ends. Very important here that the experiment ends at 60 seconds, even though the measurements have continued, the reaction stops at 60 seconds. So the volume has gone to 500 cubic centimeters, where it started at zero. And the time has gone to 60 seconds, also starting at zero. And so we can then say, therefore, our average rate here is 8.33 cubic centimeters per second. And this is the format. And these are the units that we have been asked to give that rate in 8.33 cubic centimeters per second. The next question, question 5.4. How will the volume of CO2 produced in experiment B compare to that produced in experiment A? Choose from greater than, smaller than, or equal to. Note here that this is a one mark question and you have not been asked to provide an explanation. 
and they have asked us to compare the amount of carbon dioxide produced in experiment B compared to experiment A and all that we need to see here is that they have told us that we have used the same mass of calcium carbonate, we have used the same volume and same concentration of hydrochloric acid which means we have exactly the same amounts of our reactants present which means that we will form exactly the same amount of our product. Note here that they have asked what will the volume, how will the volume compare. They haven't asked what rate would or how would the rate compare. They have only asked how much carbon dioxide is produced in experiment B compared to experiment A. And because they have the same amounts of reactants, we can say that they will form the same amounts of products. Question 5.5. A graph is now drawn for experiment C on the same set of axes. How will the gradient of this graph compare? to the gradient of the graph for experiment A, choose from greater than, smaller than, or equal to, and use collision theory, specifying collision theory to explain the answer, and this is a four mark question, so they require a comprehensive explanation. So, the first thing that we notice here is that experiment C uses powder, which we know has a greater surface area than experiment A, the granules. So what this would tell us is that immediately the rate of experiment 3 is going to be greater than. We say experiment C is going to have a greater rate than experiment A. And now we provide an explanation using collision theory. And we say we start out by saying that the surface area of the powder is greater than the surface area of experiment A, which we were told was granules. So powder has a greater surface area than granules. Therefore, there are more sites for collision. So in experiment C, because there's a greater surface area, there are more sites for collisions. Since there are more sites, there will be more collisions and since there are more collisions, there will be more successful collisions. Remember that we have not changed the way in which they collide. We have only changed how often they collide. So since we have created more collisions, we will, by the law of large numbers, have more successful collisions, which would then automatically mean that the rate increases or the rate is greater. Important to remember whenever you are asked to explain something using collision theory, you must go through all of these steps. First, discuss the change that has been made and how it compares. So the surface area of the powder is greater than the surface area of the granules. Next, you explain why this is so. So we're saying the surface area means that there are now more sites for collisions. More sites for collisions means that there will be more collisions. More collisions means that there will be more successful collisions and therefore more successful collisions means that the rate will be higher. You may not skip this step over here where you say more sites for collisions just becomes more successful collisions. You must show that you understand that we haven't changed the way in which they collide. We have just made more collisions. Finally, question 5.6. Assume that the molar gas volume at 40 degrees Celsius is 25.7 cubic decimeters per mole. Calculate the mass of calcium carbonate used in experiment A. Now, we only know what products have been produced. We only know the amount of carbon dioxide that has been produced. Important to see here that the amount of carbon dioxide produced, the volume of CO2 produced, must always be written in cubic decimeters, so 500 cubic centimeters divided by 1,000, 0.5 cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide are produced. But now what we want to do is we want to compare the number of moles of our product to a number of moles of reactant, and so that means we need to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide that were produced. We can do that by saying number of moles is equal to the volume divided by the molar gas volume at that specific temperature where we have just calculated that 0.5 moles were produced 
sorry, 0 0.5 cubic decimeters were produced, and we were given the molar gas volume at this temperature of 25.7 cubic decimeters per mole, which would then suggest to us that 0 0.019 moles of carbon dioxide were produced. We can then use our balanced equation to find that the ratio of carbon dioxide produced to calcium carbonate that we started with is 1 to 1, which means that if we produced 0 0.019 moles of carbon dioxide, that means that we must have started with 0 0.019 moles of calcium carbonate. And finally, we need to see that the question has asked us for the mass of calcium carbonate. And since that is asked for the mass, we can now say our number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. Number of moles of calcium carbonate, we just calculated as 0 0.019. The mass is our unknown, and the molar mass for calcium carbonate is 100 grams per mole. And that then tells us that we must have started with a mass of 1.9 grams of calcium carbonate.